Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with the daily report right here on your qualified news channel that is TV47. Time now for that interview on our segment Power and Politics. Tonight I host Professor Abdi Gulia. He is a former commissioner at the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, that is IUBC. And Professor Gulia made history as being one of only three commissioners to ever, or rather th one among three commissioners to ever serve a full term at the IEBC. And tonight, he will lift the, the lead on a myriad of issues regarding what happened, of course, in the 2022, the 2017 general election, and much more, because this is considered sort of somewhat a tough job that many seem to avoid. But Prof right here uh, stayed through his six-year term. We shall be curious to find out, and we shall be hearing uh, what he has to say in this kind and exclusive interview right here on TV 47. You can trust us for these uh, such like interviews right here on your channel, favorite channel TV 47. My name is George Maringa. Once again, uh, we invite you to channel your feedback on Twitter at TV 47 News at George Maringa underscore. Use the hashtag daily report as well as on our SMS line that is 22047. Prof, thank you so much for joining us on the daily report tonight. And welcome to our studios. Santa Sana. Prof, I'd like to begin this conversation <coughs> by playing a certain video here. Prof, it will perhaps, you know, reinvigorate your memory. And uh, let's take a look at that clip. I, Professor Abdi Gulia, having been appointed as a member to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, do solemnly swear that I will at all times obey, respect, and uphold the Constitution of Kenya and all other laws of the Republic that I will faithfully and fully, impartially, and to the best of my ability, discharge the trust and perform the functions and exercise the powers devolving upon me by virtue of this appointment without fear, favor, bias, affection, ill will, or prejudice. So help me God. Prof, that was on January 20th, 2017. That clip, perhaps, um, you know, it's a memory that you will remember. I'd like to begin by asking you what was going on through your mind in that moment and what vision did you have while joining the commission? Thank you very much. I, I think it's quite a while back, yeah. uh, 2017, January yeah. uh, 20th, uh, to be specific. Mm -hmm. um, I was straight from the university at that time. Uh, never heard anything about, uh, well, I heard about IABC, but I didn't have any, you know, interaction with IABC at that time. Um, and didn't know much about elections, apart from uh, having overseen elections at the university, student elections at the university on two consecutive years. Uh -huh. And uh, perhaps uh, that was the only experience I had on matters uh, elections. And so um, I was looking forward to what the new job entailed and uh, to give my best uh, contribution to, the, to serve this particular country and, uh, and, and, and my countrymen as well. So, I was enthusiastic about the job and uh, I don't regret. Mm -hmm. yes. the, former the former chairman, that is Ahmed Isaac Hassan, in his book he says that he was inspired or encouraged by the former justice minister for, constitutional, for the former minister for justice and constitutional affairs, Martha Karua, as well as Amina Mohammed, uh, you know, and his partner at the law firm. Who or what inspired you to apply for this position? To be honest, I didn't, I didn't have much interest in the job mm -hmm. at, the first, at, at first. Um, and my application was on the last day. I submitted my application on the last day of the advert. Yes. And the reason was that uh, a number of my colleagues you know, felt you know, I could take up this position. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of friends, both uh, you know, in in politics, some out of politics, you know, some um, very close, you know, friends of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually encouraged me to apply. And uh, to be honest, uh, at that time, I 
had just won, uh, was leading a team that won uh, a project at the university, mm -hmm. which was uh, six million dollars, a five-year project. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty comfortable to implement uh, my project. Yeah. And so I was not very keen to move out of the university at that time. But my colleagues, my friends, you know, prevailed upon me to just put in my uh, application and, and, and try, give it a try. Mm -hmm. I had applied for commissions before and I wasn't, uh, you know, impressed in the, by the process and uh, how, you know, I was not uh, even shortlisted in mm. some of them. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't keen, but just to make my friends, you know, tell them that I have applied. So that's why at the very last day is when I submitted my, mm. my application. When you say the university, you mean Egerton University? Egerton University, yes, that's my home university. Uh -huh. And Professor, your research interests are in rumen microbial fermentation? Yeah, I'm an animal nutritionist, You're basically. An mm -hmm. yes. I, I mean, from an animal nutritionist to matters, elections. I mean, that is quite I a big mean, contrast. I uh, mean, we deal with animals that yeah. don't talk. <laughs> yeah. uh, human beings are animals that talk. Uh -huh. And so we are, if we can communicate and mm -hmm. handle animals that don't talk, I think it is easier to handle uh, an animals that talk. Mm -hmm. so it wasn't difficult to adjust. Ah, okay. Yeah. And so, you know, you served until January 17th, 2023. When you left, did you feel free at last, free at last? I was relieved. Uh, the pressures were too much. Mm -hmm. uh, the work was quite demanding. And we joined the commission, if you recall, barely six or so months, yeah. uh, I don't know, six or seven months to the general election. Yes. Uh, we were learning at the same time implementing the election that was, you know, upcoming. Mm. And, and since that time, you know, we were looking inward for almost four years. We were looking at the systems, improving on things, uh, procedures, processes. And then came the election, uh, which was now the 2022, after we went through the 2020, 2017 elections. Yeah. And so, yes, I was looking forward to actually mm. uh, retiring from that crazy job. <laughs> How crazy <laughs> yes, was it? It's crazy in the uh. sense that uh, you go there and uh, you want to serve the country. Yeah. Uh, the minute you land there, uh, you are profiled from day one. You are profiled. As what or who? I, I mean, all politicians profile you. So you have to be careful whom you talk to. You have to be careful whom you work with. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful where you go. And literally, you lose many of your day-to-day -day friends. Uh, and so I believe for the six years I was there, mm -hmm. I was either in the office, doing office work, or in my house. Mm. And so there is no much social life uh, because you never know who will be there to say, I was with so and so. So yeah, it, it was, it was uh, an experience mm -hmm. that I don't want to repeat. Again. Okay, <laughs> you don't want to repeat it? <laughs> no, 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 I've had enough, uh -huh. <laughs> yes. We'll get to you know, what made you get fed up with, you know, or you know, have enough with this. But you and only two other commissioners, that is the chairman, former chairman of Ola Chibukati, and Boya Molu are the ones that you know, made history as being the first three commissioners to serve for the six year term. You oversaw the 2017 general election and the 2022 general election. And then along the way, several commissioners resigned. Why did you hang on? Um, if you recall, I think immediately after the 2017 uh, general elections, um, the election was uh, at the time nullified. Yes. Purely on procedural matters, nothing really very substantive in terms of the numbers that were uh, provided. Mm -hmm. uh, and so and then we had the repeat election. And uh, of course, you know, we are all aware what happened. Certain mm -hmm. candidates uh, decided they won't be part of the repeat election. And that itself caused some of the commissioners to, you know, abandon us. Mm -hmm. and. 
and so the subsequent to the after the elections and the, in preparation of the subsequent election which was 2022 yeah. i think uh, we decided the three of us that we will stay put and make sure that we improve the institution uh, for the better yeah. And so that was the motivation we had, uh, especially the chairman and uh, Commissioner Molu. Mm -hmm. That is the motivation that we had, that this is our country. We have found an institution that probably needed uh, an, an, an improvements here and there. And, and so that, that, that made us to hang on to make sure that we improve on processes, we improve on procedures, and ensure that come the, the next election, which was 2022, mm -hmm. we conduct the best election in the country that the country has ever had. And did you achieve that? Yes, we are quite satisfied with what we achieved. Mm -hmm. And we are actually very proud of what we achieved mm -hmm. because it turned out to be the best election in the, in the country. You argue, Prof, that you know, the 2017 election was barely on it was procedural issues that you know based its nullification um, but procedurally within the commission uh, at the time let's go to 2017 were there rifts when you came in because you came in as uh, six seven months ahead of the election did you um, experience rifts immediately or at what point did the rifts uh, come in i mean the in the in, in when we landed there of course we had you know we came from different backgrounds yeah. we were from different institutions mm -hmm. and so we barely knew each other, so it took a period for us to uh, know each other. Weeks, months. Work together. I mean, we had about three, four months, which okay. we had you know, no issues. Mm -hmm. We were all working together, and uh, we found uh, uh, election operations in place, plan in place. And so all we were doing was to implement you know, the election operations plan and make improvements where possible bearing in mind we came too late into the scene. Mm. Um, but I think the, uh, the little arguments that we had thereafter is particularly after the election, the main general election that was, that was held, mm -hmm. uh, and particularly towards the repeat election. Uh, and, and so that is where we, we, some of us felt that you know, the election had been nullified. The constitution is clear, it has to, a repeat election has to happen within 60 days. Yes. And we were obligated to oversee the election by the constitution and the laws. And so some of us are of the view that we should do our best again to make sure that we, do, we run a clean uh, repeat election. Mm. And, and at that point, perhaps others had different views and uh, that is why we, we saw some people resign and leave and so. Mm. Yeah. Presidential elections, or rather the elections in Kenya are, you know, a right in the constitution, a democratic right. Yeah. And Kenyans term, turn out in their numbers to, you know, participate in the election, to vote whoever they feel, um, you know, they wish to lead them. But again comes a challenge, Prof, because the voting itself, the process um, is quite peaceful, is quite okay. The issue comes in the tally and especially the presidential election, uh, which now the commission comes under fire. What is usually the conflict or the, dis the disparity or the disconnect between um, you know, the, the, the smooth voting exercise and the result? Uh, thank you for the question. I think uh, what we see, what Kenyans see, the castigation of IABC, all the allegations labeled against IABC on matters elections, mm -hmm. these are symptoms of an underlying problem. Okay. Uh, I think the underlying problem is that uh, as a country, there is a lot of mistrust amongst, uh, should I say, amongst the political leaders mm -hmm. and probably by extension amongst uh, certain communities. And uh, coupled with the fact that there is a winner takes it all mm. uh, kind of election is actually the key, the, the root cause of the issues that uh, we face in this country. 
And so the castigation of IABC, the running around labeling the officials of IABC names, these are just symptoms. But the root causes, the mistrust, the kind of electoral process that we have, yeah. system that we have adopted, which is first past the post, mm -hmm. that is where the challenge is, yes. Okay, because, because you cannot talk about democracy yeah. and the, 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 the person with the majority vote uh, wins and then if that happens to come from certain routinely from certain ethnic communities mm -hmm. we are I don't know 45 or 46 uh, ethnic communities now uh, what will the others say mm. okay so the others will always feel excluded mm -hmm. and, and, and because of that they will not come out and say we are rejecting these results because we have been excluded, then they will look tribal. Mm. But now they will look for scapegoats to try and uh, paint the results yeah. in bad light by, say, by blaming the arbiter of the election. You're for, you know, the former chairman, Isaac Hassan, in his book, he says, and I quote, in what may have, been may have been described as an indirect election, negotiated democracy or democracy by installments, the control of the electoral process by the political elites, big businesses and ethnic barons often produces a, a situation where the leaders choose their voters. This makes a mockery of a democratic election. We must also seek to improve the structure and operations of the commission to enhance its effectiveness as an electoral body because Joseph Stalin puts it thus, quote, people vote and they think they have decided. It is those who count the votes who decide everything. That's why I was asking, I mean, Prof, don't you think that it is sort of an indictment that every time this commission comes in, um, the commissioners such as you, you seem to be the ones blamed every time for whatever is the outcome? I think I, I meant earlier mm -hmm. the assertion that uh, the root cause of this problem is first past the post, which as a country, it is the kind of electoral system that we have chosen. Yes. Uh, and, and, and unless we cure that problem, because what that means is the, the common understanding of what people say, you know, the winner takes it all. Mm -hmm. That is the outcome of that kind of a system that we have. Mm -hmm. And so for those who lose, uh, there will always, in, an, in any competitive elections, there will always be winners and losers. Yeah. There is no time in an election you will have two winners. And so if the, the person who loses uh, feels that uh, you know, he is being dominated, mm. then it means therefore, the, unless you look, look at the actual electoral system, yeah. and we probably uh, m try to blend that first past the post with some uh, mixed uh, or uh, mixed proportional representation mm. or mixed member representation or pure, purely proportional representation, then this problem will always be there and IEBC in yeah. whatever, form, whatever form it will be and whoever will be overseeing it will always be blamed. Mm. Because in democracy we have to accept that uh, it is competitive, people will go for an election Votes will be cast, somebody will win, somebody will lose. So then, and so uh, yeah. if what we have, if the system we have uh, uh, adopted, you know, first past the post is such that, you know, if you get 50% and mm -hmm. one vote plus one vote, then you become a winner. 50% mm. uh, of votes cast plus one extra vote, you are a winner. Then, I mean, it is a close margin. Yes, mm -hmm. nearly half the electorate didn't vote for the winner. But does that justify if that is the kind of system that we have adopted and we have put in our constitution, mm. does it justify for us to go and fight that winner? You so know? yeah. So then so mm -hmm. the, the, that, that is where the challenge is yeah. actually and we need as a country to address it. Do we need to have this winner first past the post as an electoral process? Do we blend it so that you know we can have a more representation of 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 various other leaders in the governance of the country i mean it's something that we need to discuss then how then would that discussion if addressed help the iebc 
seem to be the perfect referee for an election? You know, there will never be perfect referee. Okay. Don't be cheated. Mm -hmm. There will always be people who will say, IABC, I lost my election because IABC stole my election for somebody else. Mm. That will always be there. Because the nature of election is that somebody will win and somebody will lose. Mm. And however transparent the process of conducting that election is, the loser will always have a, to, say, to tell an excuse to his electorate. Okay. And the IABC happens to be the perfect excuse or the scapegoat to tell to the electorate that, you know, you see, I didn't lose, but it was stolen from me. Mm. So that will always be there. But what we need to do as a country is to make sure that we look at the laws, mm -hmm. strengthen them. Uh, I think in every election, we have la lessons to learn. We need to work closely as a commission with the, uh, and the legislative uh, bodies mm. of the country to enact proper laws and to make the process of elections more transparent, like we have done our best in 2022, let the results be widely available, and whoever wants to make noise and say their votes are stolen, the Kenyans will tell them to shut up eventually. Mm. Mm. Prof, you mentioned the 2022, you know, was successful, and yes. you've alluded that, uh, you know, quite a number of times, but then, it appeared that the former commissioners, because you appeared before the Justice Agri Mutualula Led Tribunal, and they said all the commissioners of the electoral body, that is the IBC, were united until the last minute, um, you know, until the point of declaration. W what then does that translate into the output? Don't you think that that also, whereas they are, you know, you say the public, you know, those who participate in the elections, the voters may never agree or, you know, be a perfect referee, but don't you think such rifts are, are, are quite an indictment to the, con to the commission? I think people need to understand the background. Yeah, give uh, us the background. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, mm. in 2017, after the repeat general elections, yeah. immediately thereafter, we uh, found the commission needed, we needed to relook at the processes and of the commission and improve on systems mm -hmm. in order to make the 2022 election better. So we needed to have a, a, a good foundation for, for, for preparing the 2022 election. Yeah. And one of the things we had decided was to relook at our processes and to make sure that we improve on them. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we, in, after every election, we do a post-election evaluation exercise, mm -hmm. and this informs the, any changes that need to be made mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in for, for purposes of enhancing the subsequent election outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when we went through that uh, process, we, we had issues with the CEO then, yeah. uh, and so we found that uh, we needed uh, to look at tech stock of what has happened. So we wanted to do a, a, an audit of, particularly on resources. You remember elect we were being accused of, you know, using a lot of resources for elections. Mm. We came too close to the election. We didn't know uh, how resources were being, you know, used before we came. And so we said, let's start with first doing an audit on election resources. Mm. And I think that was the the reason that we had a fallout with our three commissioners who subsequently resigned sometime, I think it was 2018 or something. Yeah. They didn't want us to do the audit, audit. on the resources so that you know, we could understand. And, and for us, we were doing those resources, uh, audit on the resources, mm. so that it could inform in subsequent election how can we adjust or what can we adjust yes. so as to make sure that we use the little resource we get, you know, prudently. Mm. Uh, and so s the three of them were not for that idea. They said that they would have, you know, election has passed. Uh, let's not uh, worry about it. Mm. Whatever was spent is been spent. Let's move on. Mm. And for us, we said, some of us, three of us, we said we wanted to know what, how things were done so that we can see what to do differently. Did, was the audit done? It was done. Uh -huh. The audit was done. I think subsequent to the audit, we had the CEO fired. Uh -huh. uh, and so uh, we began now the process of internal reforms. When these other three mm. 
who were opposed to the process, they resigned and they left. So get, that gave us even a better opportunity to, you know, uh, revamp the commission in terms of processes and procedures. Okay. And so that is where our journey started from. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, when we did whatever reforms we wanted to do, uh, you remember we were fought a lot uh, for us to be removed from office. Yes. Whether it was through parliaments, through, you know, fictitious petitions, mm. whether it was uh, declarations in harambees and roadside uh, meetings or gatherings, political gatherings, we were being uh, insulted left, right, center to, to, to leave office. And are such calls prof necessary for a commission? Of course, it's not necessary, but uh, they were determined to, to get us out of office. And so, and, and we were very firm each mm -hmm. time we were approached, and we were approached by very senior people. Uh, Would you mind? I, I will not say you what, what transpired, <laughs> but mm -hmm. we, we just told them we are a constitutional office holders. Uh, we did the election to the best of our ability in 2017. We conducted the repeat election. If we have done anything wrong, take us through the, the constitutional process. And this we are ready yeah. to face it. This in the people prof, are they from government or opposition? I mean, of course, it will be from government of the day. Mm. But uh, so we, we stayed put despite all that pressure, mm. you know. Let's now come to the rifts of 2022. Now, that's where I'm, where I'm yeah. heading. Yes. And so the, when the powers that be and all the machinations to, you know, remove us out of office didn't work. Yeah. And they realized, uh, the 2022 election is fast approaching, then there was only one other option uh, open to them, mm -hmm. those who are trying to hood us out of office, mm -hmm. and that was to fill in the vacancies. So uh, you remember in 2021, the process of uh, filling the process, I mean, the, 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 the vacancies. vacancies. Four commissioners you know, commenced, mm. and if you recall, that was the handshake. Yeah government uh -huh. and and so i think the even the ibc act was hurriedly changed to suit them in terms of uh, the recruitment process they wanted to do mm. and so you know sometime late in 2021 we were brought the extra four commissioners yeah and so we welcomed them uh, opened up you know to them about all that we were doing and all that we had done. Yeah. And for a while we thought, you know, we were being open and, uh, you know, we had given them all the uh, support they required to settle in, in, mm -hmm. in office. Um, we were very forthright with them in terms of sharing information, trying to make them comfortable to, you know, uh, uh, to be to be able to participate in the in the in the, in the remaining mm -hmm. exercises, mm -hmm. and so this went on well, I think uh, up to the election time. So the ground had been cleared. Everything yeah. was I mean was set for the, for their entry. And did yeah. you gel well? Well, we gelled well. We we thought so uh -huh. from our side. We, we we thought we had gelled well. Yeah. Uh, we shared. I remember we were chairing so many committees because we were only three. Mm. And so we had to restructure the committees to accommodate them, and uh, they were chairing several other committees which mm. we were initially holding together. And, and so that is, we welcomed them and you know, gave them all the support they required to settle in and mm. to participate in the process. And this is what we thought, you know, things were going to be okay. Yeah. But, uh, of course, uh, in the, on the election day, we saw different side of our colleagues. Mm. Yes. Did, did you see that coming, Prof? Did you, see, uh, did you ever foresee that other side you're talking about of your colleagues coming? Um, not explicitly. Uh -huh. uh, whatever they had in their hearts, I mean, we, we had meetings, we used to discuss meetings, we used to sometimes agree, disagree, mm. but that's the nature of boardroom uh, meetings. Okay. And so, but it was not explicit. Um, but of course, it became explicit mm. uh, when it came to the final hours of the of the tallying and uh, announcement of, of 
results. Mm -hmm. um, there, there has been an argument if there appears to be a lack of unity or separated, divided front, then that is, you know, raises questionable queries regarding the outcome. So whereas they proceeded to, you know, the rift the country witnessed on the announcement date, um, do you think that perhaps it was proper for you that we, you know, are on the other side to continue and proceed to declare the results? You see, the question is the timing of the rift. Okay. We plan the whole election together. Mm -hmm. Since they came on board, as I told you, we allowed, we, 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 we shared committees uh -huh. that we were holding, like I was holding several dockets together, so we had to restructure the committees again to allow them to chair certain committees. Mm -hmm. And we were mixed. Yeah. I, was, I would chair a committee and I would have them as members. They would chair committees and I would have them, I would be a member. Okay. You know? So committees, when you say committees prof such as? We had several committees. We oh. had a committee on ICT, we okay. had a committee on election operations, yeah. we had a committee on HR, we had a committee on finance and procurement. So we had several committees. Okay. You know, and so, yeah. and, and so, I mean, we, we worked seamlessly. Mm. Uh, do the whole planning of the election. And uh, then the election day, there wasn't any rift in the election day. Mm -hmm. We... Not even whispers, Prof? I mean, you, you know, human beings could uh, have their own feelings. Yeah. They could probably mask them. Mm. Uh, but there was nothing, you know, very obvious to okay. us mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, the, the behaviors and mm -hmm. the utterances. Mm -hmm. And so... If we plan together the elections throughout, mm -hmm. uh, chaired committees together, went to field together, went to oversee the, even outside the country to mm -hmm. oversee the, you know, external activities that were ongoing. And then the election happens and we are all there. Then the verification of the results, which was happening, you know, BOMAS was, generally a verification venue mm -hmm. and it was also the coordination of various activities in the country and even then we had different commissioners in charge of different activities okay. and again we were mostly paired mm. to, to, to look oversee certain activities. Mm -hmm. So all this was happening without any issues. Then the results start to trickle in. That is on the evening of August 9th? Yeah, I mean, uh, August 9th is, uh, is too soon. I think it started, you know, the small... Uh, August 8th, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, then the, the small polling stations with, or polling stations with fewer number of registered voters will, of course, transmit early. So, yes. anyway, the process of, you know, results coming in uh, started. In. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were together in all that. In one room? In one room. Uh -huh. uh, we had one holding room. Okay. At Bomas. At Bomas. Okay. And so, eating together, mm -hmm. having in meetings, and you know, managing elections countrywide is is requires issues arise. Yeah. You know, in different parts of the country. Okay. We could have quick meetings, quick mm -hmm. discussions. You know, resolving issues. Uh, of course, depending on the dockets that each one of us was handling. Mm -hmm. So all this was happening seamlessly. Okay. So. Then uh, the tallying process, I mean, the uh, tallying and verification process began on the floor of the BOMAS. Uh -huh. uh, I was overly in charge of the process, mm -hmm. but commissioners were all present and participating in the exercise. Mm -hmm. You must have seen commissioners announcing constituencies, results of various constituencies. Yes. Actually, I never announced any result mm. myself. Okay. Uh, and so this was all seamless. So the only disagreement arises at the 11th hour when it is a few hours to announcing the final result. Okay. Yes. So, so it tells you uh -huh. they must have been getting orders from somewhere. You Prof, I, um, you know, I'm curious about because you mentioned the 11th hour. At what point exactly? Because up to, leading um, up to the 11th hour that you talk about, the sort of um, verification and fulfillment of the 50 plus one, 50 plus 1%. At 
at what point exactly? Because we did see the commission, the chairman, come in now towards the end, appear to make the announcements and you know make declarations and address the country somewhat alone. At what point exactly? The, the question you're asking me is in public domain. Ah. I think we put this all in our our affidavits to the Supreme Court. Yes, but uh, so it's it's not uh, uh -huh. it's not anything confidential. Okay, and. Uh, it, uh, the disagreements arose around 3 p.m. thereabout mm. because we had visitation from these guys calling themselves whatever the names, you mm. know, NSAG or National Security Committee. Mm -hmm. Again, this is in public domain. It was yes. part of our Davids, both all of us, the commissioners, uh, myself, the other commissioner, mm -hmm. and the chairman. And so once they came and they came with certain uh, advices in their opinion were on, you together? on the outcome. Yeah. Were, you, were you all together? Or? We were all together. Uh -huh. All of us together. Okay. Uh, while, and, they and while they made the visitations you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, we, they were in the bombers from early morning of yeah. the 15th, uh, I think 8.30, yeah. 9 p.m. And I mean 9 a.m., mm. 8.30, 9 a.m. They mm. were there in the compound. Okay. But because we had a flurry of activities trying to conclude the process of the verification and tallying of results, mm -hmm. we were not able to see them until about 2 o'clock uh -huh. or 2 p.m. Okay. And so, I mean, we had a discussion with them at 2 p.m. We gave them audience because mm -hmm. they wanted to see all of us. At a go. At a go. Uh -huh. uh, and so we said 2 p.m. we can see them. And so they told us whatever they were telling us and i think it is at that point that we had it started having divergence of opinion mm. on the final results yeah because the message was and i think again this is in public, public domain, domain yes the message was from these four guys uh, don't announce ruto as the winner should he be the winner uh, if you can't announce uh, uh, otherwise, then force a runoff. I mean, that was the message. Mm. And so we had them. Um, and this was all of us, seven of us, together with the four of them. Yes. And uh, each one of us, when they relayed their message, each one of us was given an opportunity to comment on the visitor's uh, warning. Mm -hmm. Well, how, was, how were the comments? Uh, uh, well, I don't need to go into the details, but it is, it is okay. enough yeah. to say uh -huh. that the four of them were in favor of the warning, mm. trying to say that the country is above all of us and uh, we should pay attention to what uh, these senior guys have come to tell us. What about you? How did you react? But for us, I mean, the three of us, we said, you know, we have a constitution. The constitution guides us on how an election winner in a presidential contest should emerge. And we swore to uphold that constitution. Yes. And so all we said was we will live with the constitution regardless or irregardless of uh, who the outcome is. Mm, prof, in, At that point, yeah. we didn't even know who mm. the winner was because so we didn't have the final results. Did they, when, they, when the senior citizens came in and they made the appeal to you um, and made the comments they made to you, did they ask for feedback at a personal level or did the grouping now, because the four you say supported the calls and the three of you, you know, dissented? No, I mean, they, they just said, this is the message we are bringing. Uh -huh. Uh, any, any, any Kenyan who will die, yeah. the blood of those Kenyans will be in your hands. Okay. If you don't do this, and if, in fact, they went ahead to say skirmishes and uh, fights have already begun mm -hmm. in certain areas. They mentioned particularly in Madare mm -hmm. and uh, in uh, Kibra. Okay. Uh, and, and they even said that uh, certain communities were being accused of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, uh, not supporting mm. 
the other communities okay. and that it is taking an ethnic dimension those fights are taking ethnic dimension mm. uh, to be precise i mean they said the Luos feel the Kikuyus didn't support them. Mm. And so the ethnic uh, clashes that are, that are beginning uh, is going to take that direction. And mm. uh, they, we were warned, if there will be bloodbath, the blood of those Kenyans will be in our hands. Uh, and so what the chairman said after hearing from them is yeah. to give each one of us an opportunity to comment. Uh -huh. In their presence, in their presence, uh -huh. um, I think myself and my other colleague, Mishina Modu, we just said we will live with what the constitution says, mm -hmm. regardless of uh, who loses and who wins. Okay. At that time, we didn't even know who the winner was, mm -hmm. and so the chairman finally ruled and said, "Okay, we've had." He told the the, the, the senior guys who came, "We've had you. Let us now. You can leave us to discuss further." Mm -hmm. and, uh, you, ca you can leave. And they left. So they left and we remained. Uh -huh. And the our seven of you. Our, the seven of us. Mm -hmm. And the discussions uh, continued uh, with our colleagues uh, trying to prevail upon us to uh, actualize the wishes of the, of the emissaries, yeah. or should I say the... The, the messengers. The messengers or, who came. And, and, and at that point, you know, we even had lots of detailed discussions. Some even saying, some of us were curious to find out, in their opinion, how we would have done what they wanted us to do. Mm. You know, some even suggesting put these votes, this, you know, immediately they left. Eh? Yeah. And the CEO walks in with now the final result. Mm -hmm. Because when we were engaging these other guys who came to us, we didn't have results at mm. that time. And some of us didn't even know what the result was or who the winner was. Mm. So when the CEO came in, the discussion now went ahead after they have seen the actual now figures. Mm. Uh, some went even, you know, uh, start saying this is unacceptable, we should not announce this. And the four? Yeah. I mean, up front. Up front. Uh -huh. so, so our discussion ensued, some suggesting let's take the, the votes that you know, this guy is winning with, let's put it in spoiled votes, and, and uh, let's declare uh, a runoff and uh, give Kenyans another opportunity. Uh, so these were the discussions we were having. So us, we found it very unconstitutional and, you know, I mean, Did some you? of us mm. believe in God, we saw with our holy books, and we said, no, gentlemen and ladies, we can't do this. We will follow the constitution that we swore to uphold. Were there heated exchanges in that moment? We had some, dis not, not extreme, but we had exchanges mm. in terms of our positions. Okay. Uh, some of us say, no, we will uphold the constitution. This, without caring who loses and who wins. Mm. And them saying, you know, we must uh, declare, because it was obvious that the candidate, whoever they had in mind, didn't, didn't win. Mm. Uh, and so they wanted a runoff to, to happen. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, the, com the, the constitution that we saw to uphold, mm. we have to abide by it. Mm. So it is at that point that, you know, the, the chair and some of the two of us, and actually we said, now we have the final results. We had an, uh, announced to the whole country that we were going to give the final uh, results at 3 p.m. Mm. We were past 3 p.m. at that time. Still in the boardroom. We were still in the boardroom, yes. Mm. And so we said, uh, now uh, we can't hold the country in suspense. We have to go and announce the results as received. And so we started, we stood up and... Uh, All of you? We, we stood up. Mm -hmm. Uh, at that point to go uh, walk out because we were in the boardroom mm. of the CEO of Bomas, which was in a different building, which yeah. was uh, a little bit uh, a distance from the main tally center where we were. Okay. So we, we walk up to get out of the building to go and walk to the tally center to make the announcements. Mm. And so uh, at that time, uh, we walked out, only three of us. They remained in the boardroom. What? The four of them. Okay. So as we were walking, we said, okay, uh, it looks like these people were with us, but they were not with us. Mm. And they had other, other plans. So that is the time we came to learn 
you know. Mm. Uh, we were probably not yeah. on the same page all along mm. to have free, fair, and uh, credible election. Mm. Uh, and so we just said, okay, we will do what is required of us mm. uh, and what we swore to do. Prof, in that moment, what, dot, what din, don't Kenyans know? Because of course, we di, there were no cameras, you know, in the, from the boardroom to the main telling center. But what Kenya, did Kenyans perhaps miss, or don't they know about, you know, the happenings between the moment, you know, especially in that boardroom and when you left? But when we, what happened in the boardroom is what I've narrated. Uh -huh, I've listened. And and, 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 and much of for that is in the affidavits affidavit, that we yes. presented to Supreme Court, uh -huh. which is in public domain. Perhaps, yeah. But so when we went out, yeah. uh, we, of course we went down the stairs and we took the, mm. the back route mm. so that we could approach the main BOMAS verification center, mm. Tallinn and verification center from the behind, mm. uh, uh, the, from the basement. Yeah, yeah. So as we were walking, we found ourselves only three of us, the mm. chairman and my other colleague, and the CEO. Mm. And we decided we will move ahead and do what is expected of us. Yeah. And so that's when we went into the approach to the main tally center. Mm. We uh, entered from the you know, basement, the backside, went up the stairs and went to our holding room where we were all commissioners we were we were holding there mm -hmm. so there we now we had one final copy of the whole result the form c presidential result is usually bulky mm. uh, this one was in excess of 400 pages i think 450 or 460 i can't remember mm. so it's a bulky document and because of the time we had we couldn't print so many copies so we had printed one whole copy, and then we had a uh, constituency and county-based summary okay. for, 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 for immediate use, yes. you know. And so we went, went into our holding room, uh, and then we called agents, because that's what we are expected of, uh, called the presidential agents into the holding room, uh, gave them the summary version of the of the results, and we told them this is the complete result. Uh, you can look at it. Mm. We can give, print for you hard copies uh, as soon as uh, the announcement is done. We can give you soft copies uh, as soon as the announcement is done. Mm -hmm. And we invited them to look at it and uh, sign the agents uh, section for, yeah. for for them to sign. Mm -hmm. So we had three agents uh, signed the copies, and uh, the Azimio agent uh, declined to, to sign, uh, saying that he wanted to scrutinize each of the 400 plus pages mm. of that document. And we told him we were here six days, exactly doing that. You have not raised any substantive issue for six days. How can you ask for to scrutinize page by page, mm. 400 pages over, I think it was 450 or 460 pages, and we had less than a day to finish our statutory timeline time line to announce the results. So we knew this was just... Somebody. And time was moving. And time, of course, we had only one day left. Mm. And so we, had, we knew this was uh, a deliberate attempt to try and derail our, uh, yeah. our announcement. And we didn't want to play to those games. Okay. So that is the time he walked out and mm. mobilized goons down there mm. who came to, you know, batter us on the stage. So, uh, Prof, if, uh, how, how did you balance the visitations and, and the, you know, fulfilling the will of the people? How did you balance that? The visitations by the senior citizens and, you know, proceeding with what you had, as you call it, the will of the people? We had various visitations from the so-called senior citizens. I mean, on 14th, we had another team. Yeah. Before that, we had some other former governor and uh, somebody else. I mean, we entertained mm. visitations. But where a suggestion was contravening the constitution mm. on the laws of the country, then uh, mm. we, 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 we would give them audience, but it would not sway yeah. our decision in terms of doing the right thing. Mm. So, Prof, having been an insider, their current, I mean, 
even now calls for reforms, electoral reforms, every now and then they have happened year in, year out of, you know, after every election cycle. As an expert, uh, what's your take on that and is it the right way to go? I mean, we have done reforms literally after every election. Yes. And reforms are not bad per se mm -hmm. because you know, when you conduct uh, six elections, because what Kenyans don't know is we are doing six elections in one day. Okay. Uh, and conducting such a uh, task of a huge magnitude, of huge magnitude, they will be bound for, you know, little errors here and there. Mm -hmm. And so it's always good to improve on them. Uh, and, and so, um, in my opinion, there are certain things that we need to pay attention to, uh, even as we do reforms mm. in, in, in elections. I think the first thing is, we have six elections in one day. Okay. It's a huge toll on the staff of the commission. Uh, six elections, imagine they have to announce, like the constituency returning officers. Mm. By law, they are required to announce two positions. Okay the MCA and the MP. MP. And remember these people, the candidates who are MCAs and MPs are all at the constituency tally center, making noise eh, at them. Mm. Now we are in Nairobi calling him or these are returning officers at the constituency, please send presidential results. So in terms of, you know, the, the election happens at the polling station. Once the polling station closes, the sequence, there are six elections, as I mentioned, there are six ballot boxes to be counted mm. by that presiding officer at the polling station. And by design, we ask them, to, or by law, we ask them to start with the presidential. Yeah. So that form, the, the presidential result form, has to be filled by the PO first, then goes to the others. Mm -hmm. okay? And now, when the PO come, presiding officer comes to the constituency, now he will bring all the result forms for all the six elective positions. Now, he has to collect and tally the results for the MCA and the MP and announce. Then for the others, he brings it, for those that are county-based positions, he yeah. brings it, he does constituency tally and then brings the to the constituency returning, I mean county returning officer, officer yes. who announces the governor, senator, and women rep. Mm. Then he has to travel with the far, uh, all the polling stations in their constituencies, the form 34A is the result, the original results for the polling station, he has to bring them to Nairobi. Mm. So it's a huge toll on our returning officers, I think. I, so to make sure elections are smooth, uh, our staff usually, for seven days, they hardly sleep. So the reforms you're talking about... So what I'm suggesting is, yes. can we have a county-based elections? Uh -huh. On a different date. On a different date than the national elections. The county-based elections could be county positions. The governor, the senator that oversees the counties, mm -hmm. and the, the MCA. They could be held, maybe much earlier. Uh, than the presidential or uh, the national one, where the national one could be the presidential, the uh, the MP, the member of uh, the member of national assembly, and the women rep. So yeah. that can be done at a separate time. It will make the work easier. They will be less stressed. They can probably do better in terms of the execution. Yeah. So that's one reform uh, area that probably uh, as a country we need to Look consider. Yeah. Now. We live in a highly ethnicized country. There is a lot of political mistrust. And uh, politicians have pulled Kenyans in different directions. They pull them apart in terms of trying to galvanize their ethnic communities mm. you know, against each other. And so in such an environment, I don't know, is first past the post appropriate. It's something that we need to interrogate as a country. Prof, allow me to interject because f the first past the post, the, uh, the first past the post, um, and whoever comes in second, right now we are seeing a scenario where the one who came in second and the first past the post um, are beginning to have talks. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, 
how does that make you feel and where does that leave the IBC and all these companies? Actually, it's a mockery of democracy. Okay. The so-called talks. What are you talking about? You voluntarily mm -hmm. went into an election. Uh -huh. Remember, we had broad lay daylight uh, pledges uh -huh. of up, uh, abiding by the results or the outcome of the elections. Mm -hmm. In KICC, all of them, the, the, the candidates, signed uh, commitments to abide by the outcome of the, of the elections and to be peaceful. Okay? Now, what is the point of going into an election, spend billions of money on it, we, the commission deploys in excess of uh, 400,000 personnel across the country. You spend a lot of time. Mm. And thereafter, you don't respect the outcome of that particular process. I mean, it's a mockery of democracy. So I think Kenyans need to decide whether they want to have competitive elections or instead of having elections, they sit be under a tree whether it is in state house or elsewhere, mm -hmm. and uh, agree, the political barons can agree on, on how to share power. Mm. Yeah. Because then, how that conversation would, should it be held then? Uh, because having been a commissioner at the IEBC, would, how would you curate that conversation of ensuring um, that we don't get to this stage where we have political noise after an election? No, that's what I'm, I was trying to enumerate. Yeah. I mean, what needs to be done? Yes. I mean, first of all, uh, let's look at the elections, can we separate, separate the dates? them, yeah. uh, have the county elections separate, maybe ahead of the national elections, maybe one month, one year, I mean six months, one year apart. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one option. Let's interrogate first past post. Is it the best model for us mm. uh, in a country where we have in excess of, I don't know, 44, 45, 46 yes. ethnic communities? Uh, is this the most appropriate way of electing our leaders? For now, it's only the presidential which has a little bit of adjustment mm. where we say that they must get 25% of the votes cast in the majority of the, of the, of the, the counties. counties. That is the only other addition to 50 plus one. Mm. I mean, do we need to have, you know, uh, a different model? I mean, yeah. there are other models, proportional representations, uh, mixed member representation. I mean, there are, as a country, we need to have conversation so that we can have more people mm -hmm. participating in the governance of the, of the country. The other thing that we can do is, I mean, we could look at uh, um, party primaries. Mm -hmm. Do they really serve the purpose? We have seen how chaotic they are, how undemocratic they are. Yeah. I mean, there are conversations that we need we need to have around uh, uh, party primaries. Um, and I think there are a number of other things that yes, Prof, we, um, we would want to share with yes. you if there will be opportunity uh, mm -hmm. for us to, to give our views on. Okay, so then does it mean we will look at the IPPG of 1997 and the, then how political parties and politicians are involved in the selection panel of commissioners. How is that model? I mean, Could it's, it's a model that has been tried. Uh, I have a reservation about uh, the independence of the institution that is conducting elections okay. if the people overseen are not themselves independent in terms of their political I mean, inclination. Uh -huh. So if I am a representative of a particular political party in the commission that is supposed to be independent, can that commission be independent really? Mm. I mean, it's a conversation we need to have. Yes. Yes. So then it would... There are countries in where political parties, are, you know, suggest uh, uh, commissioners yes. to run the elections. I uh -huh. mean, I mean, is this the way we want to go? I mean, it's a conversation worth uh, having. And, uh, uh, and really, do we then talk about an independent commission? Yeah, because I wanted to compare what you know, global democracies uh, you know, go through. Um, what would be perhaps in your 
tours as, uh, as, the, as a commission of the IBC. What are some of the places that perhaps you could point out and say such and such a country is, going, is doing well because they have adopted such and such a model and it could be perhaps be mirrored in our country? You know, which, whichever model you adopt, yes. it really depends on the citizens of that country. Mm. In those other countries, I mean, they have different models. There are models where the commissioners are coming from mainstream government appointments. There are models where they come from political parties. Mm. And so we have this across the, the, the globe, different models. Mm. But ideally, the best model is a model where the people on whose behalf those elections are being held will respect the outcome of that election. Mm. We are in a country where I said the, the root cause of our issues is ethnic ethnicity, negative ethnicity. Yes. So in such an environment, I don't know which model you will use to cure negative ethnicity. Because as you look at it, Prof, now, there are, you know, we do not have commissioners of the commission as it is right now. Yes, we don't have a commissioners, but there is, there, there is no lacuna in the law uh -huh. for not having commissioners. Okay. It's all because we don't want to follow the law as it is. Mm. Yes. So that then boils down, as I was asking, to the political involvement of the political class and the political parties. Well, that is not, the current law does not say that. Yes. We have a law in place. Mm -hmm. The IABC Act clearly has a schedule that, which has been amended in the handshake government. Mm. And uh, subsequently, people went to court. It was, the process was questioned. Mm. I think the early life of this uh, parliament, I mean, after the 2022 general elections, the early life, they tried to pay attention to the judgments of the courts yes. to improve on the process. And so that process was passed in by parliament. I mean, it may be acrimonious, but who said even when they were doing the adjustments in the handshake government, it was not acrimonious. Mm. I mean, it's a common game in Kenya. Okay. So there is no lacuna in law. Mm. The process is in place. It's in place. I do not see why IEBC should be made should be made handicapped uh, because of the wishes of uh, certain politicians. I mean, yeah. or political interests. Right. So was there? I mean, we either have to choose. Yeah. To be independent, to have an independent commission that yeah. will run the election, or we drop the word independent and have a group of representatives of political parties who will run an election. Whether that election will be run or not, it is for all Kenyans to guess. In my opinion, there will be no election. Yes. yes. So as a Kenyan and as, you know, one who served in the commission, then was, did the commission perform 100% objectively and fairly? In the 2022 general election, yes. we've had the best election okay. in terms of free, fair, and transparency mm -hmm. in the conduct of the election. All the result forms, remember result forms, once the presiding officers fill the statutory form mm. at the polling station, and we had 46,229 yes. polling stations. Once they filled at the polling station, in the presence of agents and, and observers and all other people in those uh, uh, polling, stations, polling stations, the result was being uploaded into a public portal. And we had 99.9% .9 success in the transmission of those forms. Mm. So Kenyans actually had the opportunity to do their own tallies. And we had inst institutions, some of them media houses, that did the tally. And the outcome was as, almost the same as what we had okay. eventually. So we had the most transparent, the most credible election. But because we are Kenyans and we are ethnic, highly ethnic, um, ethnicized mm, uh, mm. country, and that we have a deficit of trust, mm. nothing good will ever be good. Yes. yes. So, Prof, um, what would be your highs and lows during your tenure at the commission? I mean, um, uh, I think the negative publicity at the commission. Yes. Uh, some of us were ethnically profiled. 
we were being called names, being ridiculed. And for me, I had come from an academia background. We had, you know, I came from a place where, you know, colleagues were respecting each other and we had uh, a very good uh, relationship with uh, our, our staff and other mm -hmm. colleagues. Coming to a place where you are being insulted literally every day. Mm. I think that was one of my, I think I, what I didn't last, like most mm. uh, uh, in the commission. Um, but having said that, I think uh, the outcome of our 2022 general election, yes. it gave us, it, you know, it gave me that it was worth the insults, worth the <laughs> name calling, mm. when we had the best, you know, most freest, if, if there is anything like that, election yes. in this country and in the region. Mm. Uh, I think that was also my high, you know, I, it was, I ended my tenure on a high note mm. after having had uh, uh, s s almost six years of insults mm. throughout, yeah. So, um, you know, and then your highs, perhaps, apart from, you know, succeeding at a personal level, did you feel that the oath you took or the oath of office, uh, you lived by it from start to finish? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I have never been guided by anything else other than uh, uh, fidelity to the law. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, and I would urge any commissioner who wants to come to IABC, must never be a stooge to any politician. Mm -hmm. They must live as per the law. They okay. must implement right. the laws of the country, and mm -hmm. above all, they will be swearing in the name of whatever God they believe in. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they should make sure at some point, when people will mm. not be seen, yes. they will be asked. Eric Arrigo on Twitter asks, you know, Judge Menga asked questions regarding allegations that were brought up by the four commissioners concerning a purported planned assassination against them. Being an IBC commissioner is evidently a task considering the hurdles they went through. Would you speak to that? Who planned assassination against who? Uh, against, uh, brought up by the four commissioners regarding a purported planned assassination against them, the other four. I am not aware of any planned assassination. Okay. Mm -hmm. If anything... Uh, Did you receive uh, you know, threats yourself? Well, we, we went uh, into hiding uh -huh. after we announced the elections. You remember what happened at the podium? Yes. I was actually injured most mm -hmm. during that commotion which some of them call themselves honorable but really they are they include governors senators mps who are subjecting us to that humiliation mm. uh, at the end of the day we were held you know uh, seats and some of us i was bleeding from both legs mm -hmm. after that fracas uh -huh. and so we felt threatened uh, and so that is why after we announced uh, when we were, when the chairman came, he yes. came alone because I was injured, bleeding mm. from both legs. I think the scars, I can even show you, I have them here mm. <laughs> of that election. Um, my colleague, the CEO Marjan was hit with a blunt object at the back of his head. Mm. And so he had a swollen head at the, at the back. Mm -hmm. uh, and, yes. and so we had, because we didn't know from the reactions that happened on the floor of the, of the podium, we didn't know what was in store for us. And so we had to naturally go and feel, we felt threatened and we had to go and you know, hide somewhere and see how things yeah. are going. How about your families? Did they ever, you did ever face uh, threats at a family level? Um, our families, of course, they were being ridiculed. Uh, I remember, um, you know, my family being isolated by her colleagues. Uh, I have children in school. I never used to visit them in, during Parents' Day because I didn't want anyone to know mm. they are my children. Okay. You know, but somehow word goes out even then. Mm. So I remember my son telling me in school, you know, Daddy, I'm, when I'm going to the school kiosk, they tell me Pesayaruto imekuja. So that's the level of, you know, mm. uh, my, my, my family has been going through. But they were strong people. Mm -hmm. I told them, you know, it's, it's, it is part of the job that I'm doing and uh, it's not going to be forever. Yes. Uh, and so. 
So I mean, those hazards mm -hmm. were there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so what have you been up to since retirement? I mean, I had to, I'd gone back, of course, um, enjoying my time in the newest city in Kenya, uh -huh. uh, Nakuru City. Yes. Uh, I went back to my family who have always been in that uh, city. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of time with them in the six years. Now I'm, I'm with my spending time with my family. Uh, I had uh, lost touch with many of my friends mm -hmm. uh, over the six years, and I'm reconnecting with my colleagues. I'm going back, you know, uh, to my academia uh, life, mm -hmm. uh, getting in touch with my colleagues, and uh, so that's how I'm spending my my time now. Mm. Yeah. And uh, will you be writing a book? You've seen the former chairman wrote a book. Will you be writing a book too? Um, certainly, there is more than enough to write, uh, not just one volume, but uh -huh. more than one volume of books. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that uh, I'm considering, yes. You, you said you, do, you wouldn't wish to go back to that position, but would you refer someone to that position and what would be your advice? As long as they know what they're getting into, yes. and as long as they have the courage to withstand uh, political pressures, mm -hmm. to withstand uh, deep state pressures. Mm -hmm. So the deep state exists? Yes, it <laughs> exists. We saw it live. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can't withstand those pressures, and if you cannot say no to power, well. don't go to IABC. Okay. Yes. Um, if, if the government offered you another job right now, would you take it up? I mean, I'm a Kenyan. I'm qualified, Kenyan, competent. I do my work diligently. If I am offered an opportunity, I will serve my country. Mm. Yeah. But not at the IBC? Not at the IBC, of course. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the constitution, again, doesn't allow me to serve there. So. Okay. Uh, have you ever set foot back at Anniversary Towers since your retirement? Uh, I haven't been there. Uh -huh. Uh, I think I went there once, only once, to collect something. Okay. But uh, I haven't been to Anniversary Towers for months. In, when you think about it... When but I don't mind going back there. I okay. mean, I'm not banned from going back, to going to Anniversary Towers. I have, oh, six years, I've made lots of friends there. Mm -hmm. And they are very good, hardworking, dedicated Kenyans serving this country in IABC. Mm. And Kenyans should treasure them. Kenyans should be proud of them. And Kenyans should give them support to I, do their job. Yeah, and are you in touch with the former chairman? How is he doing? I was talking with him even yesterday. OK. Chairman is fine. Uh -huh. He's uh, probably somewhere in, in Nairobi, yes. enjoying himself. I'm, I know he has been out of the country, pro, uh, traveling around. Mm -hmm. and he was making presentations on different places. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he's back. I, he's back now. Yeah. We are when, in touch. Yeah. When you do you discuss the con uh, you know the election and you know what are some of the thoughts that you share after whatever happened? Um, we do uh, reflect on the days we had, uh -huh. uh, and I am happy that we are all uh, mm. satisfied. Okay. Especially the three of us. Mm that uh, the commitment we made to each other in 2018 mm -hmm. to revamp the commission and mm -hmm. to hold the most freest election mm -hmm. for the country yeah. came to pass. Mm. So it's something we, okay. we, we uh, enjoy uh, and talking about it. Yeah, and the other four commissioners, are you in touch? Did you ever keep in touch afterwards? No, since they left me in Bomas, I have never talked to any of them. Okay. So, Prof, uh, your, your closing remark, perhaps you can look into that camera and, you know, speak to Kenyans regarding electoral reforms, a democracy, and what they need literally to do, and perhaps should they trust the IABC? I, th I think I'd like to tell the country that um, this country is fortunate to have men and women serving in the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, mm -hmm. uh, the IEBC. Uh, they need to support them. They need to encourage them. It is unfortunate that uh, you know once in a while uh, during you know elections, we end up losing uh, lives of uh, uh, com uh, commission staff who are uh, serving this country with a lot of dedication. 
we lost, you remember, Chris Musando in 2017. We lost uh, Musioka, Daniel Musoka in 2022. Nobody should die for serving this country in IABC. Uh, Kenyans should support the commission. It's a commission that has a lot of um, dedicated, mm -hmm. competent, and very professional in how they do their things. Okay. You know, it's ironical that we hold six elections in a day. Mm -hmm. And for, for uh, an election that is held by the same institution, IABC, by the same officials, overseen by the same officials, right from chairman to the returning officers at the constituency, mm -hmm. and run by the temporary officials, over 400,000 of them. But the five elections are okay. But one election is never okay. Mm. I mean, that should tell Kenyans something, okay. you know. Yes. Uh, and so I think Kenyans chose to, in their 2010 constitution, to have uh, a, a democratic uh, country. Mm -hmm. And they have chosen that uh, they will uh, have their leaders by way of elections. And uh, we either go by the outcome of elections or we need to con have a conversation on how to have elections or how to have our leaders in office mm. if the elections that we hold as a country yeah. mm. is always being subjected to unnecessary uh, you know uh, vilification absolutely yeah Thank you so much indeed. That is, has been Professor Abdi Gulia, former commissioner of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. Abdi Gulia, Prof, thank you so much for speaking to us and of course unraveling the issues that surrounded his tenure, his six-year tenure at the IEBC, having overseen two elections, the 2017 and the 2022 election. I can see your feedback coming. You can keep it, uh, the conversation going on online. My name is George Maringa, thanking you so much on behalf of the entire team. As always, stay safe and be kind to one another. I'll see you tomorrow on the People's Court and again next week on the Daily Report for this conversation and others on politics and power. Good night from Nairobi.